Okay, this is just kind of a video on how to fix um, a Sony turn to turn monitor with a uh, really bad brightness problem. And I'm talking where you've got it set down to zero and it's still ridiculously bright. Uh, this one is so bright that the... Uh, you can see uh, some scan retrace lines here. That's just when it gets to the extreme. So, um, this is just to show how to do it. Um, I'm not going to go into how to set it up on here. I'm just going to go straight into it. I'm going to tell you how to set it up in the, dis in the description. So, uh, you need to have... And this. I will say that this will not work with uh, Windows 7 or Windows Vista. So, if you're running any of those, uh, you're going to need to figure out some way how to run it on uh, either Windows Virtual Machine or uh, find a really old computer running Windows XP or even an older version of Windows will work fine. So, anyway, um, first thing we're going to do, make sure you got an adapter connected. Now, this one I have right here is a USB to TTL converter. Um, you can also use this to hook up directly to a serial port or any RS-232 port. Um, I personally don't use that just because it's, that technology is getting old and, you know, USB is the new thing, so I'm using this instead. So, um, and that adapter is like $7, so you're, you're not really going to be spending a lot on this if you do it right. So, anyway, once it's all connected up and all set up, uh, first thing you want to do is click File and then Save Data to File. I'm sorry for those bars. I mean, that's just the uh, scan rate of the monitor. It can't really be helped. Um, anyway, uh, you want to save data to the file, and the monitor will shut off for um, maybe between 20 and 30 seconds. And it's just because it's reading data. It's reading. It's reading the EEPROM data off the monitor. And that's all it's really doing. And then once it's finished, the monitor will turn back on. So, once it's all done, you need to click Start, Run, and then type in CMD. This stands for Command. And then press Enter, and you get a command prompt window. Next, you want to go to uh, type in the Edit command. See, it says Edit. And then press Enter, and then you get to this window. Next, you want to click File open and then go to where you just saved your file from your monitor and once you do that you're going to need to open that file now you need to go back to Windows click file oh wait no I'm sorry you need to go to, go to help expert viewer and then click on the file that you just saved and then you'll get this window right here now um, the first thing you need to do is click on uh, the REG category, I think it stands for registry, and then a list will pop up on the right. The, val the, the registry you're looking for is called G2, and it's different between different monitors. Uh, on this monitor I'm working on here, it's I think it's value 110. Yeah, there it is. And you can see what value it's at right now. It is at uh, 124. So... Uh, keep this window open and you need to make sure that it's uh, 110 and what you're gonna do is gonna, gonna come back to this command prompt and starting with the value the, uh, the the first numerical value start with that and while holding the control key press the right key and count how many values you pass up um, I only say to do that because this uh, command prompt does not do word wrap so there are um, other programs. I think there's one called Programmer's Notepad. That one works fine. Uh, you can use that to edit the file. It does word wrap and you can find the value you're looking for. So anyway, uh, I already know where my value is because I've done it on this monitor before. This, uh, this edit. And you see there it is. There's value 124. So and what you want to start doing is decrease that value by about 
oh, maybe 10 or 20 points or so. I'm going to decrease it by uh, 10 points. And you need to make sure you press the insert key first. Once you do that, it highlights the number instead of just underlines it, and then you can write over it. So instead of 124, now it's 114. And once you do that, you need to click File, Save, and then File, Close. And then just minimize that because you're probably going to need to come back to it because it's... You know, you're gonna you're probably gonna have to edit that file more than once. But once you do that, um, you click file load data to set, and then click on the file that you just oh, you just edited. And then click go. And then the monitor shuts off while the EEPROM is being written into the monitor. Now, um, I'm gonna say right now that this model Trinitron we're working with here is a Dell UltraScan P991. Uh, that is a Trinitron. As you can see, it says Trinitron right there. But um, any monitor, no matter what brand it says, whether it's IBM, Sun, HP, Sony, whatever, if it says Trinitron, it is a, it is internally a Sony tube. Because Sony is the only... Uh, what is it? The only company that made the Trinitron. So... Let's see. Um, the monitor should come back up. You see, I just heard it come back on. But if it if it doesn't come back on after maybe about a minute or two, then um, either something has gone wrong or you didn't do something right. So as you can see, the brightness has already gone down. I'm not seeing the the retrace lines aren't near as visible anymore. They're still there, but it's a lot better. And like I said, you're gonna have to do this a few times until you finally get it to the right uh, to the right value. So anyway, let me come back and and uh, find the right value. Okay, I found the right value of the the monitor. Uh, I had to decrease it by another 20 points to get really good blacks. As you can see, they're like perfect. <laughs> so, um, something I, need, I should point out, since it's at 94, uh, that one now became a space. If you put a zero there, it will screw up the monitor. Or not so much screw it up, but it won't work. And until you go back in there and change that zero to a space, and then, and then try to load the data again. So... This is something I wanted to point out. So, um... Let's see, what else is there? Um... There is something else you gotta do on some models. I think this... One of the models it applies to is the Dell Ultrascan P1130. Um... Sometimes, just loading new data into the EEPROM isn't enough. Sometimes, instead, the data gets bloated into, I think, the monitor's RAM or something like that. And, um... Next time you turn it off and turn it back on, the monitor's original settings come back, and on top of that, your menu uh, function gets locked. I mean, like, where you push a button, and then you, all you see is, like, a little green key, like that. What you want to do next, if uh, to prevent that from happening, is click Adjustment, Procedure, and then click on Final Setting. And then you'll get, and then you'll see this window. Next, you want to click OK, and wait a few seconds. And then it'll ask you if you want to set the final values. You click OK, and then your brightness and contrast will get reset to default settings. And then it should it should be good to go. After that, you click OK, you click Exit, and then everything should be fine. You know, your menu will be unlocked and everything. So I'm going to put my brightness back the way I want it. There we go. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. As far as fixing the monitor's brightness. 
So, like I said, I, I, actually I don't remember if I said it or not, but uh, you need to be running XP, Windows XP or an older operating system, preferably Windows 98 if you still have one of those PCs. Um... Because they, they, I think Windows was written around the time when uh, Windows 98 was out. So, let's see. Um, if you if you do not have uh, Windows XP or older, but instead you have Windows Vista or Windows 7, I'll have a, I'll have in the description a separate video on how to uh, set up. Uh, Windows Virtual Machine, which will run XP, which is what I'm running right here. So, anyway, I uh, hope this uh, works for you. Good luck.